Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Wow, have I had an exciting week. I have been playing with this machine for a whole week. Uh, every night that I get a chance after work to play with this thing, I have been going crazy with it. And I am loving it. This thing is incredible. It has blown my mind in so many different ways and I'm really excited to share what I've learned and what I can show you with it. This machine is 22 watts of laser power is almost incomprehensible of how powerful that actually is. So I have been playing with this. I've been cutting all sorts of pieces and just trying things. But mostly it's been in wood because I haven't had any other materials. I finally got some materials in last night and I've been playing with one or two of them and uh, I've been learning so much. So I've had lots of successes, lots of failures and I'll, sh I'll share them all with you. But before we get into that, I just want to give two warnings about this machine. This is 22 watts of laser power. This backing sheet here is completely reflective. So really guys, be careful of your eyes. Wear your glasses at all times and, or get some other protective shield over this thing. Because this thing is, is a dangerous machine if you abuse it. If you use it properly and use it the way it's intended, it's a fantastic machine. But it can be dangerous, so please be careful always wear eye protection. I'm going to buy a better eye protection. I'm not 100% sure if I trust this, but I will be buying better eye protection. And the second thing is the smell. That, you know, is, I, I don't know if you saw in the last week's video, which you can see over here, uh, I did a video there where I cut something, a piece of wood, a piece of plywood, and the amount of smoke that filled my office and for how long my office was smelling of smoke. So um, I've moved this across to my workshop so it's separate from there. But even then, the smell inside the workshop can be overpowering. And when you're cutting something that's a little bit suspect and you're just a little bit cautious of that smell, it does get worrying. So what I've done is I, this week, I went out and I brought, bought this. Oh my word. This thing is massive. Let me try and get it on here. Oh, 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 I'm breaking everything. I can't even see over it. So I'll just put it here for a very short while. This is an enclosure uh, from Creality. Uh, hang on, let me try to get my head in here. This is an enclosure from, an, from Creality. It's a great, it's great because it's got a little fan on it that blows all the smoke out. I'm going to take it off my desk now because I can't do the video like this the whole way through. Now, can I? It's got this pipe. He has the pipe for venting, venting, and that I've now pushed to outside. I've 3D printed a part in here that goes into this to adapt, which is awesome. 3D printing. Right, let's get that out the way because that thing is massive. But that makes a huge difference in my workshop because uh, when I'm working there, when I walk in there after it's cutting or even while it's cutting, it's got that protective layer in front there. I, even though it's got that protective layer, I still wear my glasses at the same time. I'm not taking any chances with my eyesight. But the smell is now sucked out through that pipe, goes, blows outside. The enclosure is a big must. That is, if you buy a machine like this, you must buy that enclosure. It just makes all the difference in the world. It keeps your workshop from stinking up and uh, filling up with smoke because this thing can smoke, I'm telling you. Anyway, so now that we've spoken about that, Let's talk about what I've done this week. So, well, I started off, obviously, in last week's video with, with this eagle. This eagle, check it this here. Check it the, this, this quality here. Look at how detailed that is. It cut exquisitely. I was absolutely blown away. But this is on the sample wood that I got from Reality that came with the machine. So I went out and I bought uh, this wood here which is a is a much thicker wood it's three millimeters thick it's plywood as well but it's three millimeters wood not much thicker it's a little bit thicker and then i tried the eagle again so i cut out the eagle in three millimeters so this is the eagle now in three millimeters on wood and there's literally no difference to the cut the cut is perfection it cut it easily without battering an eyelid you can see there and also the biggest tip i can give with this machine is print out your test zones. Anyway, so I print out lots of these, play with them because it gives you a good indication to what the material can handle. On from that, I then played around with some other things. So um, I'm doing a little project for work where, I, where we are printing out QR codes and this is a little demo of it and I've tried it out. 
works perfectly, scans easily as a QR code. So I want to do this on stainless steel or something similar to that, and we will get to that shortly. Then I like the idea of making boxes for, for everything. So I tried out a little box. This is a cute little guy that's 50 mils by 50 mils, and that came out gorgeous and was easy to glue together. You, uh, There's lots of websites where you can go and build this box. I'll, build, I'll put a link below where I designed this box in and now I also really enjoy marble runs so I have started cutting out items for a new marble run this is from free laser files I think I've cut this a little bit heavy a little bit uh, strong on the laser but this is called freelaserfiles.com I'll post the link down here even look at the little eight that is pushed in there like that and uh, we've got some other parts and I've got a whole container full of, of parts for for this uh, for this marble run. So yeah, very excited about this. Going to put this together because I love putting marble runs together. So that's that. Then uh, my wife uh, has a ministry. We have a church that we run together. She's the pastor and I'm in the technical background. But I wanted to do stuff to enhance the image of the ministry. So we've done something similar to this. I don't have the other cut here, which oh, there you go. Uh, I done, I've done, my son designed this, okay, and we tried to put this on. Let me just get that lined up properly. My son designed this, we put this into the laser, and it cut out gorgeous. I then tried spray painting it with black paint first, and then uh, sanding that off. It partially works, but unfortunately, this plywood that I'm using here is not the best. It doesn't work the greatest. So at the bottom, there's an orange tin that is coming through from the, the wood below. So you've got the thin melamine on top and the bottom on the plywood. And then you've got that, the other wood in the bottom. And the other wood is ugly. So that doesn't look so good. So it's a work in progress. All of this is a work in progress. This is another little coaster that my son designed for Christ Healing Center. Go check out the website. And uh, yeah, that one also was with spray paint. But I, you can see the orange of the wood coming through below that. But I'm going to get better wood to try this out. Also, here is another example of a test grid. These are vital so that you understand what you need to do with your wood and how you want to cut it. I've got another test grid here for this is for engraving. But uh, yeah, the, the letters didn't come out properly. So obviously I didn't set the settings for that correctly. And that's what you need to do. I made another box this is really heavy okay this is a hard drive box this is a box full of hard drives that uh, all my old hard drives that i have lying around so i'll cut this box out and put the drives in there then i decided well let me try this on a bigger piece of wood so i tried it on this and i did my settings very similar to what i did on the plywood and as you can see it came out very nicely but the cut was not very deep then I tried, well, let me let me see what the limits of this wood is. I will take this, I will cut it sort of at, at a very slow speed to cut the circle, the, the around here, and engrave deeper in it, okay? But I'm going to up the settings and maybe do two or three passes. So I just threw some values at the cutter, okay? And I walked away, came through to my office here, and waited for this thing to finish. It took about 20 minutes to etch it up uh, with three passes. I'm uh, sorry, two passes on the on the etching, and then a three pass on the cut. And I heard the laser beep, and I walked across, and I wasn't expecting much. Okay, then I saw this. Look at this, guys. Look at that. That is 21 millimeters thick. This is pine, and I did three passes on the uh, at forty percent on the uh, on the edge, and you can see how deeply it cut in and how beautifully it cut in. But you'll also notice something interesting about the wood is if you look at the there's ridges in there that are higher than other ridges. Now, obviously, that's where the rings of the wood are, and slightly harder on those sections, so it didn't cut away as evenly on there. But then I cut through the wood. And this blew my mind. When, and look at this. Here's a, I've got a vernier here. So we're going to reset it to zero. So there we go. Oops, let's do that the other way around so you can see it. That is almost 21 millimeters thick. And okay, I don't know inches. So I'm going to switch over to inches. 
0.8 of an inch thick, okay, that it cut through. It was on three passes, but the fact that the laser focused on that and was able to cut three passes to cut through this thick wood as a 22 watt laser, that blew my mind. Uh, I really, I was shocked by this. And I don't know about you guys, but I was shocked. Yesterday, I got some other materials in that I'm still playing from a, a company called Trotec. Uh, they are based around South Africa and all around the world. So go and check out Trotec and they've got laser cutting parts and all this. I got some Trotec Trolays and this is a kind of a plastic sheet that has a um, has two layers, one black layer and a silver layer below it. And then you can etch it out. So I started to play around with this. Okay. And my first attempt, I think you might agree, was a little bit on the uh, on the intense side. Uh, that was at 80% power. And uh, yeah, that that melted the plastic at a ridiculous rate. So I'm glad I ran the test. Then I did another test and this one came out better, but because the plastic is so light, it got blown over the work area while it was cutting. So this here also semi failed, but I'm able to read the letters and the numbers off there and get sort of an idea of what would make a good pass. So what I did is I set the speed to 6,700 millimeters per minute and the power at 20%. That is what this told me I needed to do. So I did that and I ran this and how gorgeous is that? How gorgeous did that come out? I was blown away how gorgeous that came out. Okay. This is supposed to be for CO2 lasers, but works perfectly on the diode lasers. So go check out Trotec. I also got some anodized aluminum that you that is like this. This is anodized and I did a test on that. Um, I'm still going to do another test on the other side to get a better test. I will keep these test cuts just so that we can I know what to cut things when I try them. So I have a portable hard drive okay that I've, I've got here. This is a portable hard drive that's got a normal two and a half inch hard drive in it. But then I thought I would try this. So I put this at the same speed as this uh, sheet over here which I think was around uh, 6,000 millimeters per minute at 20%, okay, which is now the anodized aluminium. And that hard drive cover is anodized aluminium. So I thought I'd run it through. Now, while I was running it through, I had the glasses on, spot checking every now and then, and I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anything coming out because the, the shadow, and, and I just couldn't see anything. I thought, oh gosh, this is a flop. Maybe I should cancel it. I let it run. And when it was finished, are you guys ready? I was blown away. Look at this. Look at, look at how gorgeous that came out. My word. I cannot believe that is not coming off. You cannot rub that off for anything. That is not coming off. That is what it came out of this thing. I I was so blown away. I was so excited. I'm so happy. I can't wait to find other anodized aluminium parts and just start going crazy with this machine. I'm having an absolute ball with this machine. This thing can, what it can do is incredible. I'm ordering more items. So I've ordered some leather and I've ordered some MDF. I'm going to try the MDF because I've heard the MDF does a really great job. So I'm excited by the potential and the opportunities that this thing gives me. And come on, guys, this, I never expected that. Look at that, look at that, look at that. I never expected that out of a diode laser, a CO2 laser. Sure, we can understand it will do that. A diode laser, this is what it's cutting. Well done, Creality. This machine is, is incredible. I love to see what the 40 watt is like because, damn, this thing is, if this is so good, can you imagine what the 40 watt can cut? Goodness sake. So, but guys, when you're using these machines, just be careful, be safe, always be responsible, always wear eye protection. Don't look at the beam for an extended period of time, even with the eye protection on. Just protect yourself and protect yourself from the fumes. The fumes can get quite hectic, but if you blow them outside, away from you, all good. If you can push it through a filter, even better. Okay, filter it and then push it outside. That is fantastic. But guys, I hope you are as excited as I am about this machine. Get yourself one of these. Get If you can get your hands on one of these, get yourself one. This is the most fun I've had in a very, very long time. I have to be, I'll be working and I'm like, I can't wait to get home until I can get back to this machine and get going. But guys, check this out. 
play with this machine. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. I forgot to say that halfway through the video. I've got one member, Michael Portelli. Dude, you rock that you actually joined my memberships. I'm not offering my memberships anything, but as I get more and more members, I will start offering. I'm, I'm already setting up a Discord server. Tell me in the comments down what I should do to make you join my memberships. It, it, it just helps me so much. And I cannot tell you, Michael, how much you, you alone have, have motivated me to carry on with this channel. I was feeling so despondent, so worried, should I continue with this, this channel? It's not growing, it's not growing the way I want to. And then Michael came along and, and joined my memberships. And I get comments of, thank you so much, you've helped me up. You know how much that does for me, guys. So comment on this video, tell me if you like this video, and subscribe. No, shush. Yeah, that's another thing about this machine, it's loud. Sorry, I must have pushed a button or something, but it is, is loud with the pump running and the fans on here. It's not a quiet machine. That's another reason why I have it over in my workshop. So like and subscribe. See you soon and let me know in the comments what you want to see. God bless you. Stay well, stay safe. Love you guys. Bye.